Hello YouTube. What if I told you you could make up one dough and use it for several different things? Anything from dinner rolls to a pizza crust to even chicken and dumplings. Today I'm going to introduce my multi-use bread dough. And I'm also going to share recipes uh, that you can use it with like dinner rolls, pizza, cinnamon bread, cinnamon rolls, all those good things that you like to cook and eat. Um, this is really not a real fattening dough recipe. It um, starts out as easy as this. We're going to take a cooked potato. It totals half a cup. Throw it in the blender. We're going to need a quarter cup of butter, a quarter cup of vegetable oil. What I did was I melted my half a stick of butter and then use vegetable oil to bring it up to total half a cup. Pour that in your blender. Then we're also going to need six ounces of warm water, two teaspoons of yeast, one fourth cup of sugar, and two eggs. We're using warm water. The butter's been melted, it's warm. When we incorporate the sugar with that, it's going to start melting the sugar. This also will help activate the yeast. We're not adding our salt in here because if you add salt, when you add the yeast, it can hinder the activity of the yeast. This is a bread yeast jar, but I don't buy yeast like this. It's very expensive if you buy yeast this way. You can buy it in a 16 ounce container and just keep it in the freezer. It lasts for years. This yeast that I'm using is probably four to five years old because I've kept it in the freezer. Once you get your eggs and all your ingredients in there, this is what I consider the wet part of the dough. You're going to turn it on the blender. Hell yeah, don't leave your eggshells in there if you drop an eggshell in. Be sure to take it out. You're going to have a little crunch in your dough if you don't. Place a lid on it and let your blender mix on it and run for a couple of minutes. This will make sure that potato is chopped up very fine. It's going to actually uh, when you're done, it's going to look real creamy and have a nice, really nice texture. This is going to make mixing up your dough really easy. You don't have to knead this dough. All you have to do is mix the wet with the dry and put it in the refrigerator overnight. By placing it in the refrigerator overnight, it does wonders to it. Your bread dough is going to come out soft and really easy to work with. It is a wet dough, so it is very forgiving. You can add flour to it and just make some wonderful things out of it. We're using three and a half cups of flour, one and one half teaspoons of salt. Take your a spoon or and mix your sugar. I mean, I'm sorry, your salt in with your flour, so your salt is not all in one place because you're not doing a whole lot of mixing with this bread or this dough, excuse me. And like I said, all you're doing is just getting everything wet with the wet ingredients going into the dry. You are going to need a container that probably would hold about three quarts with a lid. That way you can put it in the refrigerator. It is going to rise up some even though it's going in the refrigerator. It's going to at least double its size maybe even more. I just take a spoon. If you've got a KitchenAid mixer, which I do, but I find it's easier to clean up because all we're doing is basically stirring this around until everything gets wet. You'll spray the inside of your uh, Tupperware type container and you'll also spray the lid so it makes it easier for you to get the dough out. And what's great about this is you just take out what you need. I used uh, 25% of the dough to make a large pizza crust and another 25% to make uh, six or eight dinner rolls 
and I still had enough to make a whole pan of a dozen cinnamon rolls after that. See all we're doing is just getting everything wet and making sure there's no dry flour in the bottom of the bowl. Once you get that done and you get it in the refrigerator, it does need to sit at least eight to ten hours. Um, by doing this, like I said, you're not having to knead the bread. Uh, all the ingredients are working together to make a, a nice uh, glutinous bread dough. In fact, when you try to make rolls, you just about have to twist the dough off to get to separate the dough. Uh, what would be the easiest thing to do would be to cut it up in portions and then smooth out your rolls to go in the pan. I've even made hamburger buns with this and slider buns and I'll show you how to do all that in videos coming up. I'm probably going to make hamburger buns tomorrow because I'm almost out. I place this in our spray container and put the lid on it. Put it in the refrigerator. I do spray the top of it too that just kind of, you know, if it does rise up and hit the top, it's going to keep it from sticking because it's going to absorb some of the oils that are in the container also. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make, uh, I'm going to show you how I make cinnamon bread really easy. Uh, I had used 25% of the stove for something else, so it took about 75% to make a whole loaf of cinnamon bread. Uh, the loaf pan I use is on the small side, so if you're going to make a nice big loaf, I would suggest using the full recipe for some of it. I have a nice silicone mat that I like to use. It just makes cleanup really easy. You're not, you don't have uh, this flour all over the, the counter. I took a cup of brown sugar and added two tablespoons of cinnamon to the brown sugar and we're going to incorporate it all together. I'm not adding any butter in this. You know, that's going to be a little different recipe. When I make cinnamon rolls, I'll add butter and cinnamon. But today we're going to use craisins and just uh, cinnamon sugar mixture. And we're not going to use all of this uh, cinnamon and sugar. So if you don't have a use for it in another way, just get out a half a cup of brown sugar and only one tablespoon of uh, cinnamon. I'm using Ceylon cinnamon as an organic cinnamon. I actually got this at Sam's. Uh, that full jar is around six to seven dollars. You're going to need some uh, all-purpose flour to put down on your counter, your bench, your mat, whatever you're using. Um, because this is a sticky dough, you do have to flour down before you take it out of the bowl. Um, you're going to really be adding a lot of flour to each side of it. We're not going to get a rolling pin out and roll this out. We're just going to press it out to the shape that we want it to be. Take our hands and kind of pull on it a little bit and stretch it. Uh, if it gets a hole in it, just take your fingers and pinch it back together. It's going to be fine. As you'll see when I flip this over, I made a little bit of a hole in it and I just take my fingers and, and press it back together. It doesn't have to be a perfect square or anything like that. We're going to um, be rolling it up and all that is not going to show in the end product. I just grabbed a handful of craisins. Uh, you want a measurement, it's approximately about half a cup. Like I said, we're going to be using about a half a cup of cinnamon sugar, cinnamon brown sugar. We're going to put our craisins down first and spread them out. Dry fruit does stick together, so be sure you take the time to separate out the pieces that stick together uh, so you've got an even coverage of your fruit into your bread. Everybody that gets a slice wants to have a little bit of the uh, craisins with it. I usually use raisins, but I was out of uh, raisins, so we use craisins. I like them also. Craisins are a little more tart, where raisins are more sweet. We use uh, four to five tablespoons is all we use in this. It may not even be half a cup. 
You can use as little or as much as you want if you don't like a heavy amount of cinnamon. Then reduce the, the cinnamon that you put in there. It is your recipe, so make it the way you like it. Because the bread's going to do the rest of the work for you. Okay, when we get the cinnamon on it, we're just going to start rolling it up from one end. Doesn't matter which end you start with. Uh, I usually use the end that's closest to me, just a little bit easier to roll. After you get it started and get it about <clears throat> a third of the way, get your pan and measure about what length you're going to need it. Uh, I just started folding it in to make it work to fit in this pan. We're going to put it into the sprayed pan, seam side down. Press it into the pan so you're trying to press out any air bubbles. We're going to let this rise in a, in a warm place. Uh, if you were storing this for, for later to get it out later and let it rise, like if you fix it the night before, we're going to get it out the next day and let it rise. And these lock and lock containers are really nice. Uh, they're, they're big enough for you to put your, your um, dough and pan and all in. Uh, this is how you test to see <clears throat> if your dough is proofed or risen enough. When you press in on it, it's going to bounce back. When it bounces back about 50%, then you're good. It's ready. We baked this at 350 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, use a temperature probe and check your temp. Internal temperature of bread needs to be around 165 to 170. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. Stay tuned for more to come. If you haven't joined our channel, do so. Uh, click on the notifications bell so you get notifications of the new videos coming out. We're going to come out with more videos showing you how to use the spread dough. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We try to answer all questions. This is the Pressured Prepper, and I'm out.